Hello, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I have discovered the wonders of green screen and I will now use it for everything I do. So, now that we're all stuck at home due to the 2020 plague, I thought I should make a couple of videos about my trash builds, which means having to build things with whatever materials there were in my shop when the quarantine started. Since nowadays, things like hardware stores or places to buy plywood are but a thing of the past. Today I'll be making a Dungeon Master screen, which is an accessory for tabletop role-playing games like Dungeons & Dragons, where the Dungeon Master greedily hides all the game's secrets and mysteries from the other players. This one is the official version, well, one of the official versions from D&D 3.5. It's about a meter long, around 20 centimeters high, and it folds neatly into a very portable, almost square. I always wanted one of these, but made out of wood, so it would look like an actual worn-out medieval artifact. The plan is very simple. This thing will have two sides. The front part will have two main panels with some artwork and two smaller wings that will be there just to help hold the whole thing up and to hide the table from the sides. The inside part will be covered in a thin layer of cork, so the DM can put up papers like charts, maps and things like that. I thought of going for a version with four sections of the same size, like the very fancy stuff they use in Critical Role for example, but I was going to transfer the artwork from a photocopy page, so the two front sections ended up being the same size as the paper I used to make those copies. I took out the empty paper and then used that to mark my wood and start cutting. As I always say, trash plus time is an investment. This particular piece of super thin plywood has been in my show for maybe a couple of years. Last year I used this part to make the mummy book and then now this other part will become a dungeon master screen. You never know when your trash is going to be your salvation. Then I had to actually cut both front parts. That ridiculous white plank is what I use to make straight cuts right now. Next video I will probably be making like a, a proper jig to make that task a, a little bit easier having to carefully clamp everything every time I have to cut is like a gigantic waste of time. And as always, once everything is cut comes the most annoying part, stupid sanding. Now that everything is smooth and ready, it's time to finally transfer the artwork onto the wood. This is done by using Mod Podge or any equivalent glue to cover up the surface of the wood and then placing the photocopies or laser printed pages inside down onto that glue. Just make sure there are no air bubbles around and then leave it to dry overnight, just to be sure it's perfectly dry. Later, once the glue is dried, the toner should be stuck to the wood and we only have to remove the paper. This process is rather time consuming, since you need to be very careful when taking out the paper without actually scraping the very thin layer of toner. After a lot of scrubbing you will probably still have some paper residue on top of your artwork, but that's no problem, since later when we apply the varnish the, these small traces of paper will actually become invisible. But just before that I decided to add a little bit of black paint to the borders so it looked as if it was burned or just very old and grimy. The outer borders are done with a small brush and the back with some spray paint, since we are anyway covering that with cork so it doesn't really matter. And now comes the fun part, applying the varnish. As you can see, after all the water is dried you actually still can see a lot of paper residue all over the artwork. That could probably be removed with like a little bit more patience and water, but there's, there's really no need for that. As you can see, once you apply the, the protective coat, all traces of the paper eventually disappear. In my case I only had this yellowish varnish, but it actually seems rather appropriate since I wanted the piece to look similar to a, like a really really old painting that starts to get yellow. Now that the front parts are ready, it's time to make the side wings. Once again, in my many trashy adventures I found this, which in my opinion of course is a beautiful piece of rusty metal. And since I wanted my DM screen to look like a very old medieval artifact, I wanted to actually keep all those rusty colors and texture to use on the sides of the DM screen. So I removed the big chunks of dirt and just a little bit of the uppermost layer of rust. I then cut uh, a couple of pieces from this, rounded the corners, made all the borders smooth and then applied three to four coats of clear lacquer. So the fantastic color will be protected from the world and of course the dungeon master would be saved from all the nasty oxidation. And then I had to make some anachronistic decisions. I originally thought of using very rustic looking metal nails, but that was never going to hold that piece of metal uh, to the wood behind it, so I just went from some uh, rather modern looking screws. 
let's just say it's dormant technology. They are rather advanced when it comes to building things. All right, and this was the first significant mistake in the project. I was supposed to make a medium hole in the metal part so the screw could pass uh, through without any problem and then a smaller hole in the wood so the screws would actually grab onto that but sadly in the last one I went all the way through with the big drill so well as you can see the screw became more or less useless. So here's a very helpful tip of how to undrill your wood. First cover one side with tape, grab some of the sodas that you probably have around from the previous drilling and then start filling up the hole along with some super glue. Repeat this a couple of times until the hole is all filled. Since it dries very fast, you should be ready to go and drill again in no time. As you can see, it works really nicely. Later, as it usually happens, I had to cut off all the pointy parts of the screws that were poking out on the backside. And with that, all front parts are ready, and it's time to put them all together. As per the new only trash rules, I went to my leathery leftover bin, which luckily has plenty of strips from many other book builds from the past, which obviously I never throw out. I selected a couple of pieces of leather goat, since it's very thin and at the same time is very resistant and very hard to pierce. I used that to make the Necronomicon cover, and having to sew that was absolute agony. To glue everything together I use what I'm assuming is the equivalent of barge. Over here that's what shoemakers use to make their shoes. Then comes the leather and glue for the wings and with that the front part is finally done. And now comes the back, which will be simply covered with a thin layer of cork so you can attach all the papers and maps and anything you want with a couple of cork pins. Gluing the back of the two main panels went great, but then came another significant problem. I also wanted to put some cork on the back of the wings, but as, as it usually happens when you don't write down your freaking plans on, on a piece of paper, I completely forgot about that. And obviously, only after everything was dry the next day did I realize that there was no space for another layer of cork. The ungluing process would have completely destroyed it. That was my last piece of cork of that size. And sadly, there are no hardware stores open in the middle of the plague. In the end, I just used some more leather leftovers to cover up the back of the wings. I think it looks classy, and it also holds pins with a little bit of lack, and it actually works as a good place to use tape that can be easily removed. So there is my new fancy DM screen. It is actually a rather easy build, if you don't use any weird rusty decorations, uh, you can very easily use fabric instead of leather, and all the other materials can easily be found in any school supply store. When and if we see one of those again, who knows? So bye! Alright, uh, subscribe, hit the bell icon, blah 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 blah. Stay safe, take care of your loved ones, kill everyone else.